Hey there, good afternoon everyone. Welcome to Prog Monster. My name is Murph. I am the host of this show, a show dedicated to progressive rock and other forms of rock music. So it's that time of month. Yeah, the end of the month has come already. April passed. Wow. Especially the weather. We haven't had the best of weather, but it is a transitionary month. What are you going to do, right? It's not quite winter anymore, but it's not summer either. It's that weather that kind of is in the middle. A little bit of good, a little bit of bad. This April's been a little bit more bad than good. Anyways, we're not here to talk about weather. We're here to talk about my album hauls for the month. So what that basically means, for those of you who are new to it, is that once a month I go over the albums I've purchased or stuff that I've uh, been given as gifts or maybe I uh, found it at a yard sale. You know, lucky me if I did. Or whatever, you know, I have different places I go to look for different levels of quality of albums. So a lot of the stuff I got this month came from Laser's Edge. Quite a bit of it, actually, I would say... Yeah, about most of it actually came from Laser's Edge this month. For some reason, I decided there was he had quite a few things that I wanted that uh, were hard to find anywhere else, and so I bought them off him. It was a little bit costly, not because of his pricing. His pricing is actually very good, very good indeed. But because it's in the U.S., you get exchange rate, and then of course you have shipping, which is always a cost factor, you know. However, you know, if you want good stuff, you got to go and he packages his stuff well. Albums are really good. Everything is fantastic. So I really look forward to getting it. I got 15 on one order and four on the other. And I'm happy with everything I've gotten so far. So without further ado, we're going to go through what I got here. So I've kind of put them in a little bit of an order. I, I tried to do the... Uh, progressive stuff first because that's the stuff that most interests me and most people are interested in so I, I bought this is my first one from this group iron butterfly of course this is in a god of the vita of course um i think this is an album you kind of got if you're going to go with these guys it's kind of the one you got to start out with i've listened to it once just once it's kind of my first kind of Iron Butterfly, listen, I, I liked it, it was good, it's a little bit more uh, of 60-ish sounding and a uh, little bit of uh, psychedelia in here, more than I would have thought, so anyways, I don't know why I didn't think that's Iron Butterfly, it, you know, it almost screams at you, psychedelia, uh, but you know, sometimes people are a little slow and I tend to be among the slowest, so this album, for those of you who don't know, came out in 68. So this is the first album I got in for today's review. You got a nice shot of the boys here. It's not really much to this. It's just a basically just a folder. Put that back in there, and uh, yeah. So I've listened to it once. It's on Adco Records, six tracks I believe. So uh, I liked it. I liked it. I'll be listening to that more. Uh, next up is an album I haven't opened it yet. This is not a band I generally follow. I've taken a bit of heat for that. Um, it seems like a no-brainer when you think about the music I listen to. This is Kansas's uh, Point of No Return. Many people have cited this as one of their best albums. It does have Dust in the Wind, which is my favorite Kansas track. And I have listened to this for a challenge. I visited an album challenge. No, maybe not. Maybe it was in the battle of the... It might have been a prog battle. A battle, I can't remember. Anyways, I haven't opened it yet. I will get to it. Again, I, I, I know that some people don't understand why I can't get into these guys, but I don't make the rules about what goes on inside my head or what I like, so I just listen to what I like. I'm hoping that eventually this band will be a band that I like quite a bit. Seems like a no-brainer, but there's a couple of things about them that I, I don't really like. So I'm not going to get into that right now. But anyways, it's, it's ready to be unwrapped at some point soon. Another album I have not yet unwrapped. Well, actually, it is unwrapped. So I must have listened to it. Oh, yeah, I did. I remember now. This is King Crimson's Islands. Such a good album. I listened to this once. This will be the next one in my selection. Currently on my 
playlist is Lizards, which is oh, fairly far up there now. I think it's in the top five or six albums on the playlist in the length of time. I don't know how long it's been on there. I'm going to say about four months. So this one would be the next one to go on. I've been, I decided with King Crimson I was going to listen to their albums in order and see if I could kind of generate that kind of um, feeling of... Uh, you know, uh, people that listen to them when they came out at the time when they first started, got the albums as they go, that kind of same excitement that happens when you discover something you like and then the next one comes out. Yeah, so anyways, this is it, King Crimson's Islands. Haven't, uh, yeah, I've listened to it just the once. So next up, where is that other one? I, think I didn't move it up to the same point. So this one I just did a video on, um, yesterday for, for the live experience so if you want you can go back and look at it I gave um, I, I went through the album and listened to it and kind of critiqued it and tell you what I like and don't like about it that kind of thing so if you like that kind of thing you can go back and watch that video um, yeah you King Crimson's USA I was happy to get this I wanted some King Crimson live I haven't got any until now and this one I like quite a bit uh, so so off the charts instrumentally though wow okay the next one up is an album i did have in cassette of all things and i do believe wherever i put those cassettes i still think i have it somewhere this was an album i listened to quite a bit um i discovered this when it first came out and i believe it was in 1990 no just before that but i did I did listen to this quite a bit before I went to New Zealand and then quite a bit when I came back from New Zealand. It, it, to me, it's a Yes album. It should have been a Yes album. It's only missing Chris Squire, Anderson, Bruford, Wakeman, and Howe. It's a good album from that time period. Maybe one of the best Yes albums from that time period. And I know it's not technically a Yes album, but the only person that's missing off this album is Chris Squire. Anyways, it's got the uh, Roger Deep. Uh, Roger Dean artwork and Bill Bruford is actually on this with uh, these guys which uh, hadn't taken place for a while at that point great album the next one up is from a band that a lot of people seem to have taken to heart and really like and uh, are pleased that I'm liking it and uh, this is Nude from Camel I do like this album uh, this is a band that I both like and don't like and I don't know if that makes any sense I like listening to them, but I don't get so so jump happy when I hear their stuff. I don't know why. You think I would? Anyways, this is uh, the original. Plus, it's got a whole whack of uh, bonus tracks on it. About nine. This is a good. No, this is not the original. Sorry, this is a uh, a upgraded. The original issued new. What is this? This is this a mastered remastered? I think it's a remastered. Yeah, it might be a remastered. Anyways, it's got about nine or ten bonus, ten, ten bonus tracks on it. All really good stuff. I love the album cover work. I love the sound of this album. Fantastic. Uh, looking forward to hearing it on my playlist eventually. Okay, next up. Uh, this was an album I've always liked by this band. Um, it's one of the few post progressive era and we know where I'm going with this this is Genesis uh, their Abacab album I've always liked this album even though it's very poppy no reply at all and who done it uh, and of course Abacab which is a fantastic tune but for some reason I've always liked this this kind of poppy album I don't know why but I do anyways it's one of the one Genesis albums that I was missing so now I'm not missing it Next up's album, I haven't opened it yet. Um, wait, I'm, it's got a lot of stuff in it. And you know, in fact, let's open it right now. This is Riverside's en Entity, ID Entity. This is an album that I have listened to. Um, it was during my um, 19, when I did the uh, Prague Albums review, I, uh, pick I had this album I like this band I bought this album based on that it's so good and it is oh this is different I've never seen this before so anyways you got two discs 
two discs. There's one on one other side and the other on the other side. The book in the middle doesn't come out though. It's part of it's 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 stuck to the thing. So it's got like a lot of the lyrics. It's got that artwork that's synonymous with these with these guys. For those of you who don't know, this is a Polish progressive rock band. Really, really good stuff. Um, I think part of the thing I like about this band is it's got a kind of a kind of rush sound to their music. In some some areas, their music is quite rush sounding. So you've got uh, seven discs on the front. A nice cover too, eh? Uh, nice disc. Uh, seven discs. Sorry, seven songs on the first disc and four on the back disc. And two of those are uh, bonus single edits. So. Basically, you've got the original versions and then you've got the single edited that, that are reduced for single periods. I, I am aware, I'm, so it's good. Anyways, I'm starting to be tongue-tied here. Anyways, a very, very solid album. Um, I paid a little bit more than I normally pay for stuff. But this is, uh, and the quality of sound on this album is really good. Production is fantastic. This is, this is something that will grow on you, I believe. I listened to it for the uh, series that I did, and then I bought it, and I listened to it. I haven't listened to it off here, but I listened to it online for um, something else I was doing, and uh, I, just, I just really like the sound of the album. So this is a group I'm hoping to get a lot more into. Riverside. Oh, we've got to step this up a bit on the way on. Here's a band that I've long wanted to get into, but for some reason the albums are always expensive. Mostly, I think, because they're double albums a lot of the time, and and uh, I never get any of the used versions. It always has to be new ones, so they're a little bit pricey, but I got this one. It was a reasonable price. I'm happy to get it. I've listened to, I used to listen to it um, online a, a little bit, which is not something I often do. I know I'm not getting a real clear shot here anyways. The, for those of you who can see it, it's the Flower Kings. Those of you who can't, it's the Flower Kings. I love this album cover too. It's really nice. So it, this is a double disc album. Comes with this book. Really, really nice done book. There's a nice shot of them all. Um, more shots of them all. Got, it's got all the lyrics too, of course, which is what you would expect with the modern stuff. Another shot of the band. Um, yeah, really, really, really good stuff. Comes a little folder with it. I can show you too if you want to see it. There's this little pocket. Nice little, that, that's an excellent cover. I love that cover. It's the uh, same one as that's on the cover here, but a bigger version of the corner here. Or here, sorry. Where am I here? Yeah. Uh, it's got two discs, disc one and disc two. So you've got, on disc one, you have nine tracks. On disc two, you have nine tracks. All new material. Most of the songs are fairly, yeah, it looks like you're gaining, you're somewhere between three and eight minutes for all the tracks. Now, I know they get into some longer stuff at some point, but um, this is by Royal Decree, the album. Really, really good. I've listened to both track albums. Now, I prefer the first disc over the second one, but still, I like it quite a bit. For those of you who haven't heard of them, I'm sure there isn't very many out there, but if you haven't heard of them, uh, the way the guy explained it to me is these guys are, are more like, yes, some of the bands that you hear are more like Genesis, but these guys are more like, yes. Um, yeah, really solid, solid stuff. I like them a lot. Okay, next up, this is one that I've already done a live new uh, on what's new video on it. Jethro Tull's Rock Float, or Rock, rock Float. Well, he takes it from Ragnarok, which is the <coughs> end of the world for the Norris mythology, for those of you who are unfamiliar with that. Anyway, some really good stuff on here. Um, if you play this at high volume, it's so good, uh, so clear. Yeah, people are going to say Anderson's voice is weaker, and it is, but he's 75 years old, for Christ's sake. Anybody gets to 75 and he can even sing, I'm happy with. Uh, but he can still write, he can still put together some memorable music here. Really good. This, I actually think I might like this more than the Zealot Gene, which I liked quite a bit. So I think this is this is a good buy for me. 
I went and actually bought that um, at my favorite record store up when I went up there last week. Um, I didn't actually go up there to buy it, but when I went in there and I saw it, I bought it. <laughs> so here we're moving on. This is an album I've long wanted. Hawkwind, a band I've grown to like. I do have in the Hall of the Mountain Grill. This is my second one. This was actually the one I wanted originally, but it was too pricey, but I got it for a price that I like. And uh, I just like it. I listened to it its entirety once. I like it as much as I thought I did. <laughs> and great, great album, Hawkwind. Haven't opened it yet. This will be my adventure into um, jazz fusion. Now, I've never been a huge jazz fusion person. I did like Relayer, which had some jazz fusion elements. I'm sure there's some other stuff that I've listened to that I liked as well. But this will be my sauntering into it. I haven't opened it yet. I'm waiting for... I like a nice bit of time so I can really listen to it. When, whenever you're listening to something new, it's always good to sit and just listen to it, not allow yourself to... I don't know if this is a background album, so I don't want to get a bad kind of feeling for it when it doesn't deserve it. Anyways, everybody's told me this is great. Mahavishnu Orchestra. I'm giving it a 100% chance here. Next up, band I like now. I've listened to this entire album once. And part of the reason I decided to listen to it, I wasn't, I, I wasn't thinking about listening to it right away, but um, Ben gave me that um, Randy Hillage uh, uh, challenge album last week and I thought you know what since I've listened to Randy Hillage I'll see how how much he sounds like gong is really good this is this is very psychedelic almost like ostrich tentacles which I also enjoy quite a bit so both of them are really good uh, here's an album I wanted to get since uh, since the uh, since my uh, favorite I think it was my favorite albums of the 1980s I'm not sure what it was. And I don't think it was the 80s because I don't think this came out then. Anyways, I did listen. It might have actually been on Ben's album challenge. I can't remember. It comes with three discs in the set. For those of you following, this is, uh, of course, I didn't show you that. should have showed you that first. <laughs> A little slow on the uptake. So this is Fate's Warning. Pretty good. Perfect Symmetry is the name of the album. It comes with a the original disc plus the demos plus a bonus DVD. So you get three and one for this. So you got you get your original di disc, which is over here. Your um oh, what is it? A demo disc, which is of the same songs but the demo versions. And then you have on the last disc over here. A bunch of bonus tracks. So I've listened to this, I've listened to the original version once since I bought it. I haven't listened to the rest yet. It also comes with a booklet. Let's see if we can get it out of here. I'm dragging this out a bit too long, I think, today. Um, yep, nice shot of everybody in the band. It's also on the album itself. Same picture, pretty much. It gives you uh, a little background on the group. A little part uh, talks about the songs. Nice shot of them on the back. So this is Fate's Warning. I'm not sure when the release all of this was. I'm gonna. I bet you it's the '90s. I got a feeling it's the '90s. This album. But let me just check because I don't want to give you the wrong bit of information here. So much to this, it's hard to. Okay, so it says. 1989 so yep pretty close to what I thought it was 1989 unless that is just when the band formed I'm sure somebody out there will know if somebody knows if this was from 89 or from the 90s let me know anyways I like this album a lot so that was one I just listened to it the other night for the first time since I got it I did listen to it online it's a little bit different you get you get a much better exposure to it on my stereo system than I do offline. Okay, the next one up is an album I was ecstatic to get. 
I got this for five bucks. I was been looking for these albums for a while. This is Styx's Wooden Nickel Collection. For those of you not familiar with that, Styx released Styx One, Styx Two, The Serpent Is Rising, and Man of Miracles. Their first four studio albums were all released on Wooden Nickel. Not easy to find because they never really sold much. Um, but this is just great. I love these albums, especially that uh, the first one and the and Man of Miracles. Those are fantastic albums both of them the two in the middle is still not bad so i've got four sticks albums to listen to i'm so happy so now i've pretty much got almost all my sticks albums completed here except for the one that i don't want which i probably won't buy so the next two are from the same band so we'll kind of do them together here we are blue oyster cult yes we are this is the uh live album i believe yep extraterrestrial live and this is mirrors their studio album so I haven't listened to either because I can only listen to so much and I'm I love these I love these guys so I know I'm gonna like this album quite a bit when I get to it the studio one um, people told me this is one of their better albums so I I love all their albums so I can't see how they're not gonna be good a live one I've always liked them live I've seen them live telecasts on uh, YouTube so I'm looking forward to hearing how they sound here and it's got like a lot of really good stuff on here too um, Joan Crawford's on here burning for you um, Godzilla veteran of a thousand psychic wargs uh, ETI don't fear the Reaper yeah just some really good stuff on here okay so we're down to the final seven so this one I got because I always wanted to know what they sounded like. Um, and me being the way I am, I tend not to listen to stuff on the internet for, uh, I don't know why, I just, I never do. And so I saw it, it was five bucks, had to have it. This is Elf, and for those of you who are not familiar with this, this group, this is the group that spawned Ronnie James Dio, and you are not going to be able to tell who he is by looking at him on this. But I will take it out, give you the chance. For those of you who have not heard of Elf, so there you are. There's a picture of the group here. I think he's the second guy from the left, but I'm just guessing. Yeah, I think that's probably him. I mean, it's a very different sounding album. They're not really what I thought they would be, but still like it. Next up, got this one. And well, I guess I'm just looking here. I can't remember what I got with this. It might have been this one, actually. No, nope, I don't think it was. I can't remember. I got two of these at the same time from the, uh, from the uh, record store in the mall. Um, I can't think of the name of the place. Anyways, they were on sale. I got two of them together. This is Alice Cooper. This is his From the Inside. I like this. It's good. I've only, last couple of years, have been starting to get more into Alice Cooper. I did like some of his um, new wave-ish stuff uh, back in the early 80s. And then I got in for listen to that, and then I got out and I never went back. But uh, since then, I've started to listen to his stuff. A little bit on the creepy side, but not bad. Okay, so next up we have... Uh, where are they? Yeah, we'll do... Uh, we'll do the heavy metal ones next. We got two of them. Uh, some of you have already heard the video I did on this one. Made in, made in Japan, Judas Priest solid album solid album live or not live uh altered or not altered vocal changes or not vocal changes still a great album yeah uh listen to it its entirety a few times now really really solid time period for judas priest then we got this one which was the other one that i needed for the first two with randy rhodes dire of madman i haven't opened it yet i will though this was always this is this was always probably my favorite of the two albums but i like them both they both got killer stuff on them you know killer stuff those first two aussie albums hard to beat and we're going to go to the more poppy stuff so the last three are kind of poppy um this one i got 
it was a dollar and I don't own any Roy Orbison but people keep pushing me to get into them so this is just with all of the lyrics I mean he has a unique voice there's a picture of him there and this I believe was released shortly before he died if I'm not correct unless it's a re-release it says 1989 so I think it might have, or it was 1988, so it might have been shortly before he died, or maybe it was post, post on a list, I'm not sure. Anyways, I thought I would try a Roy Orbison, I will get to listen to it at some point soon. Uh, then these two, so I listened to both of these two. These are probably the two weakest albums I bought. Uh, this one, I probably paid too much. Not a big ELO fan, this album really hasn't made me a bigger one. It does got some tracks on here that I don't mind, but I just never was big into them at all. I used to think they were American until somebody pointed out, no, they're British. But it doesn't. It hasn't made any changes. It hasn't improved my listening ability for them at all. But you know, it's still it's 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 an okay album. I just think I paid too much for it, so that kind of bothers me. <laughs> the next one was a dollar album. I saw it, I thought to myself, you know what, you don't own anything by this, but there are at least at least two or three tracks by this group I like. And and I, I've listened to this entire album and I still only like two or three <laughs> tracks by them. But you gotta have any 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 group that has a a, a female vocalist like um, Cass Elliott, you gotta you gotta listen to them. She is one of the best uh, female vocalist of all time if you ask me and then you know Michelle Phillips who's you know unfortunately gets compared to her isn't really fair I think she has a great soprano voice not to mention that she's a knockout beauty but that's not here there neither here or there I still think her vocals are just really good just she never got the kind of airplay that Cass got and nor should she have Cass was a better vocalist but she is not underrated by any means. I think she's just very good. Okay, so, um, yeah, I listened to this in its entirety. It's got some good, It's good, the, the tracks I like by this group are good on this album. So there you go, Mamas and Papas to finish, for those of you who didn't know. So what's that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. That may be the single most I've gotten in a month. It might be. Uh, it was an expensive month, I will tell you that. But I got a lot of stuff that I really like. And uh, uh, some of these have already appeared in videos. Many more of them will go towards videos at some point as well. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of, of uh, my hauls for the month. What do we call this show again? New Stuff? I think it's called New Stuff. I'm not really sure. I can't remember. But it'll be on the list when you go looking for it. So I hope you do enjoy this. And uh, tell me if there's any of these things in here that I ask questions about that you got answers to. That would be nice. So please like. Subscribe. It's much appreciated. We will be back at the end of next month, which will be May, with another album haul. I don't think it's going to be as big as one. My, my album haul collection is now completely empty. And we'll be back again next month. Uh, that's how you can tell by looking at my videos and you see albums go in there. You know I've been purchasing. But I don't expect to be purchasing too much this month because I'm going out of town in June for a week. And uh, so my money might be tied down to that. So at any rate, uh, I hope to see you all again next at the end of next month for another album haul so take care and have a good day bye